So far we have talked about simulated emission which is uh, necessary for forming lasers and I I spent quite some time deriving the conditions for lasing so we we derive that if we want to have lasing then we need to have more number of electrons in our higher energy state as compared to the number of electrons in our lower energy state so this this uh, uh, n2 by n1 should be greater than 1 and then we we derive that for this to happen in a semiconductor the the condition has to be that the separation between the quasi fermi levels this uh, efp uh, minus uh, efn should be greater than the band gap or the separation between the the quasi fermi levels should be the separation between the quasi fermi level p and n should be greater than the band gap of my semiconductor so now what i want to do in this video is to is to explore kind of you know how how we can achieve this because if you think about it this doesn't seem very very uh uh, you know very readily achievable because normally we are used to seeing these uh, quasi Fermi levels EFP and EFN within the band gap of the semiconductor material unless you have degenerate doping where this uh, quasi Fermi level moves into the conduction and the valence band so let me give you two examples in this video of how we can uh, achieve it so let me scroll down here so I can I can give you these examples. So let me first give you an example which is of a degeneratedly doped P N diode. So I have a P plus N diode and I want to see whether I can achieve this uh, population inversion or the condition for uh, simulated emission to dominate over here. So let me first draw the band diagram for this at uh, at zero voltage bias. So I'll draw the diagram at V equal to zero. So now I have a P plus N diode. So let me draw the, um, so this is, let's say my P layer. And uh, so it's degeneratedly doped. So here is my quasi Fermi level over here. And uh, since I'm in equilibrium, there's only one quasi Fermi level. So it, there's only one quasi Fermi level for both P and N. And then over here, I have my N region. And this is also degeneratedly doped. So this uh, would be my N region. And then I'll, I'll just connect these bands. So this is in uh, V equal to zero. So there is only one quasi Fermi level. I'm not applying any external voltage. So this, this would be how my band diagram would look like. All right, let me smooth it out over here. So this is my band diagram at uh, V equal to zero. So now what I do is, so this is my PN diode. And what I can do now is to apply a positive bias on it. So this is my uh, P plus N diode. And I have my depletion region occurring over here. So this is my boundaries of my depletion region. So I have my depletion region somewhere occurring here. And and now what I'll do is I'll apply, apply a positive voltage on it. And let's see whether I can achieve the condition for for uh, lasing. So if I if I look at this band diagram, all the states below my quasi Fermi level are filled with electrons. So all these states are filled with electron in the N type region, and all these states are filled with electrons over here as well. So now let's see what what happens if I apply a positive bias on this. So again, I have my P region, all right, and I have this this quasi Fermi level over here, and this will go all the way till the end of the depletion region, and then I have my N type region, and I have forward by this, so I've reduced this barrier between the P and N region. So this barrier, which was this barrier over here, has now reduced, and now it's a very small barrier, so. I have my end region situated over here, let's say. Let me draw that lower. Over here. And this is the quasi Fermi level coming from the from the end region and this extends all the way into the depletion region. And now let me connect this P and N region. So it will be connected like this. 
And then I have this quasi Fermi level for electrons will decay down as it goes into this into this uh, p type region similarly this quasi fermi level for holes will essentially approach that of uh, of electrons as i go into my n type region so this is the boundary of my depletion region over here so now this is pretty interesting now if i look at you know again where my electrons are so all my electrons below my uh, quasi fermi level for uh, in the n type region are occupied so all these states are occupied with electrons and all these states which are below my uh, below my quasi fermi levels in the in the valence band side these are also occupied with electrons now what's most interesting is to look at what's happening inside the depletion region over here so if i look at what's happening inside the depletion region over here so if I look at what's happening inside the depletion region over here, all these states which are which are above my um, above my um, so if I look inside the depletion region over here, so this is my E F N. So this is my E F N. This this dotted yellow line over here, and this is my E F P. So if I if I look at the difference between them, this is greater than the band gap. So I, I have EFN minus EFP, which is greater than the band gap of the semiconductor material over here. Another way to look at it is uh, is to look at uh, where the electrons are located. So if I if I see the conduction band, which is my higher state over here, so this is all filled with electrons. So I have N2 to be you know quite large. But if I look at my valence band over here, this is actually em empty of electrons because all these electrons are which are below this quasi Fermi level are filled. But if I look at the states so over here, these are empty of electrons. So my N1 is actually small. So if I if I compare these states, I do have N2 by N1 greater than one, or I have achieved population inversion uh, in this case. So I have uh, N2 greater than N1, and I've also verified that the separation between my quasi Fermi level is in fact greater than the band gap. So this is one way we can achieve a population inversion or we can achieve lasing uh, in, a, in a semiconductor device. But this is for the case of, of where I have degenerate doping. But now I challenge myself and you know I say, can I do it without degenerate doping? So let me show you one, one case where I can do it uh, without, uh, without degenerate uh, doping. So I have this uh, second case and what I have over here for you is a PIN diode. So I have a PIN diode. And this is uh, none of these are degeneratedly doped, but I have a catch over here. So what I'll say is that my P and N type uh, layers, they're made up of a high band gap material. So this is of a higher band gap. This is of a higher band gap. And my N type in my I type region in the middle is made up of a low band gap material. So this is low band gap. So let me draw the band diagram for this. So let me draw the band diagram first for V equal to zero. So I've no, applied no external voltage uh, across this. So let me draw the band diagram. So let me draw my P type region for, actually I have a larger band gap. So this is, this is my P type region over here. And then I have a, then I have this uh, Fermi level. And uh, since I'm in uh, at zero voltage, I only have uh, only have one Fermi level, so this is my. It extends all the way through the device, and this is my p-type region. And then on the right, I have my n-type region. So this is my n-type region over here. And in the middle, I have in the middle I have this uh, low band gap material. So in the middle, I have this uh, low band gap material over here. And uh, so now, if I draw the band diagram, these are connected. So. Let me draw the band diagram over here. So this, and then it drops to the low band gap material, and then it's like this. Similarly, over here, I have I have 
this. So this is my band diagram of this uh, PIN, uh, PIN diode at uh, V equal to zero. Now, now let me see what happens if I apply a forward uh, bias on this, on this, on this uh, PIN diode. So the, now let me draw the band diagram again. So I've, I'm assuming I've applied a high enough uh, positive voltage. So this barrier between my p-type and n-type region has uh, greatly reduced. And so this barrier between my p and n is very small. And in between I have this low band gap material. So in between I have this low band gap material. And now I need to look at my quasi-fermi levels. So I look, look at my quasi-fermi levels for my for my p-type region, and it extends all the way into my depletion region, and then it and it then it approaches that of of my n-type region. And if I look at the quasi-fermi level on the n-type region, it again it extends all the way into here, into the depletion region, and then it slowly decays back. Uh, to to what is there in the p-type region. So now now let's look at what's happening inside this inside this uh, inside this low band gap material. So if I look at inside this low band gap material, here is my EFP. So here is my EFP, and here is my EFN, and over here is the band gap of my low band gap material. So this is the band gap. So again, what I have over here is EFP minus EFN is greater than the band gap. Another way to look at it is look at all the states uh, which are occupied. So all the states which are below, uh, which are over here are occupied. And all these states which are below my, this quasi Fermi level are occupied as well. So if I look at inside my inside my low band gap material, I have these states uh, in the higher in the conduction band which are occupied. So n two over here is large, while I have these states in the valence valence band which are empty. So n one is again small. So again n two by n one is uh, greater than one. So this is another way we can achieve uh, this uh, population inversion or the condition for lasing in a PIN diode where I have a heterostructure diode, where I have a low band gap material inserted uh, between inserted between two high band gap material. And in this case, I don't need uh, degenerate doping to achieve this uh, population inversion.